The world is continuing to mourn the death of former United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan. A global diplomat died on Saturday at 80. Annan's family and his foundation announced on Twitter that he passed away peacefully after a short illness. The UN mourned the loss of Annan via Twitter Saturday, saying, quote, We mourn the loss of a great man, a leader, and a visionary, a life well lived, a life worth celebrating, end of quote. Born in Ghana, Anan was the first black African to head the United Nations, serving as its leader from 1997 to 2006. He was also the first Secretary General to emerge from the ranks of the UN staff as Secretary General. Anan was instrumental in creating the Global Fund to fight AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria. The adoption of the UN's first ever counter-terrorism strategy and the acceptance by member states of the responsibility to protect people from genocide, war crimes, ethnic cleansing, and crimes against humanity. His Global Compact initiative, launched in 1999, has become the world's largest effort to promote corporate social responsibility. Michael Moller, Director General of the United Nations Office in Geneva, said Anand not only had compassion for those we were trying to help, but was a United Nations man from top. To bottom. Kofi Annan's major legacy was the, his humanity and the effect that had on the, on the globe, on all of us and everybody who came into contact with him. It infused everything that he did, every decision that he made, every judgment, that he, uh, judgment call that he made, and, um, and it infused our organization to a very large extent. In 2001, uh, Anand was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize jointly with the United Nations for Humanitarian Work. After leaving the UN, he chaired the Kofi Annan Foundation and the Elders, the group founded by Nelson Mandela. And joining me now to discuss the life and legacy of the former UN Chief and Nobel Peace Prize laureate is Eric Boateng, the Deputy Head of Mission at the Ghanaian Embassy here in Washington. Mr. Boateng, Welcome to Africa 54. Thank you very much, Esther, for being in the studio. Now, so much has been said about Kofi Annan's contribution to humanity. But should, how should the world really remember Annan? Right. If you would permit me, Esther, um, in the name of the ambassador, His Excellency Dr. Ajay Bafobewa, who is not in here today, we wish to extend our deepest condolences to the bereaved family and to the rest of Ghanaians, both in Ghana and the diaspora for the loss of such an irreplaceable person. Now, coming to your question, how should the world see Kofi Annan? I believe you've said a lot in your introduction, and the world should see Kofi Annan as a soft-spoken man, humble, someone who respected everyone he came across, but in spite of his soft-spokenness, was a very tough and never backed down on his decision. He was a self-assured man who really fought for peace, stability, and development of the world. So, uh, Eric, what are some of the key highlights that Ghanaians remember him for that the rest of us, the rest of the world, don't know about Anand? Right. He is someone who, if he can have his way, would always want to work in the background also. He had been very instrumental in, in the governance of Ghana also. And because he's a man of peace, Whenever elections, I mean, Ghana has been touted, for instance, as a, a, a place where the rule of law and democracy is really thriving, and then government is changing from one party to the other peacefully. But in times, there have been tensions from time to time, and Kofi Annan has been one of the voices that the stakeholders had always listened to when such situations had ar arisen. Again, having retired from the UN, one of the rules he also picked up was the Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Ghana's premier university. And he led a massive transformation of the place, which has been attested to by the Vice Chancellor. He is a man of peace, and with his our belief that the youth of Ghana will really emulate him, and the leaders all over Africa and the world would follow his traits in diplomacy and his love for peace and stability and security. You know, in all fairness, in the African culture, we don't speak ill of those who have passed on. But there are still critics who say that he didn't step up uh, in some situations where he needed to step up as the UN Sec uh, Secretary General, uh, citing the case of Rwanda's genocide. Is this a fair criticism? Well, 
I wish the man was here to speak for himself, but I can probably quote or refer to one of his responses to such a question that was posed to him when he was alive. And he did admit that he thought he was doing his best at that time, but on hindsight, he believed he probably should have done more. But he did say that the UN system, the international media, and the world leaders that he was pressing at that time for more troops contribution, if they had listened, I am sure we could have averted that genocide together. He said the troops on the ground were not well equipped and they didn't have the mandate to react to the force that was brought to bear at that point in time. Mm. So in that respect, he has admitted his personal you know, role in that and apologized for that. But he did very well for the world whilst he was alive and he should be remembered for that. Now, here at the embassy in Washington, is the embassy planning anything for Ghanaians and the Africans in the diaspora to remember him? Right. The government of Ghana, led by His Excellency the President, Nana Kufuado, has declared a week's mourning with flags flying at half mass. The embassy is opening a book of condolence. Tomorrow is a holiday from Wednesday to next week, Tuesday, for the international community and everyone to pay their last respects to him. Kofi Annan is a royal. He was born to an aristocratic family. And because he comes from the Ashanti tribe and he was honored by the Ashanti with the Busumuru title, which is royal in nature, I'm sure a lot of consultation is going on to see how his funeral and final funeral rites will go. And in due time, it will be released for the world to know. So briefly, how should we leave the legacy of Annan? Kofi Annan always advocated for peace stability, security, and development. And per the UN Charter, if all of us together can come, join our leaders and pursue the diplomatic traits he left behind, I'm sure the world will be a better place for all of us to live in. And that is how I enjoy the rest, in remembering his death, to emulate the example he set for all of us. Eric, thank you very, very much for your insight. Thank you.